All right, Brian, for more on this, let's bring in our political panel. Joining us now is Richard Fowler, radio show host and Fox News contributor, and Mark Lauder, former special assistant to President Trump and chief communications officer at the America First Policy Institute and fellow Hoosier. Thank you so much to you both for joining us on your Saturday. A lot to get to. So let's start with the president's call to Congress to uh, pass this uh, assault weapons ban, which, as Lucas pointed out, is going to be very tough for Congress to do. The president keeps relying on uh, the former ban and, and keeps making this claim that it worked. Watch this. And in the 10 years it was law, mass shootings went down. So factcheck.org, though, it just takes a quick Google search, says the numbers aren't so clear. In fact, they point to a DOJ-funded study which found, should it be renewed, the ban's effects on gun violence are likely to be small at best and perhaps too small for reliable measures. So, Richard, I come to you first on this. Do Democrats need to maybe take a pause? Does a president perhaps need to take a pause before uh, at least we get some more research in on this assault weapons ban? Listen, I think this goes far beyond policy. I think this is you're the American people, Sid. Since, the, since this year has started, since January 1st, we have had 274 mass shootings in this country. Since Buffalo, uh, Topps Grocery Store, uh, which was just about 10 or 15 days ago, we've had almost 20 mass shootings in this country. And in the Topps Grocery Store shooting in Buffalo, as well as the shooting at Robb's Elementary School in Texas, the shooter used an AR-15. And so what the president's asking for, and I think what a lot of what the, what the American people are asking for as well, is how do we create a world in which people can go to the grocery store, people can go to the movie theater, people can go to the hospital, people can go to the places that they go to every day and live in community without the fear of a mass shooting. And one of the ways to get to that is finding ways to limit people's use of guns. And I say this as somebody who's also a gun owner, right? But I also understand as a gun owner that I don't need an AR-15 to protect my home or to protect my family. Look, I think everybody wants something to get done. Done for sure, but you can't say that there isn't some politics happening, at least in Congress, where they, where Democrats, even in the House and Senate, can't agree on the approach on how to get something done. For example, there's a big gun reform package moving through the House right now. They just advanced it. There's going to be a vote on it next week, and it includes uh, things like raising the minimum age to buy an assault rifle, um, basically banning high-capacity magazines. And then Representative Mondaire Jones, a Democrat, drops this in the middle of the markup hearing. Watch. If the filibuster obstructs us, we will abolish it. If the Supreme Court objects, we will expand it. And we will not rest until we have taken weapons of war out of circulation in our communities. Now we know where they want to go. We just said it. In the filibuster, expand the court, forget the Constitution. So, Mark, I mean, what do you make of that? Do you think things like that help the conversation? No, and I think it just polarizes it even further. And and what we're and what's missing right here is an all or an all of the above kind of solution. You know, we need to deal with more than just guns. And many on the left just try to point to guns, guns, guns. We need to get into the issues of mental health. We need to get into the issues of strengthening families, strengthening communities, hardening our schools. When you look at some of the worst attacks, you know that go back in some of our nation's history, we didn't just ban the weapon that was used. We strength and security, whether it was post 9-11, whether it was post uh, Oklahoma City, we hardened the buildings, made things more secure. And so we can take an all the above the approach. But the problem is, is that Democrats just keep going back to this tired old narrative that it's all about the gun, all about the gun. It's about the shooter. And we need to get to the fundamental facts of that, whether it's fatherless homes, whether it's families, whether it's mental health, and, and all of the above. And the mental health and the red flag laws and, and things like that, school security, are being discussed on the Senate side. Um, Richard, I want to ask you, um, what do you make of those Senate talks? I know there are at least eight Republicans that are negotiating right now, and they need 10 to be able to pass anything in that Senate. What do you think? Are you heartened by these conversations? 
Look, a couple things here. I've had, I've, as the privilege of a journalist, I've had a chance to sit down with some of the Parkland victims, some of their parents. I've also had a chance to sit down with gun owners. And here's what I know. What I know is, is this. It, we could have this conversation over and over again about how we're going to harden our schools and make our schools look like prisons. Um, but that's not going to solve the problem, because we are the only developed country in the world that has this amount of mass shootings, like I said at the beginning of this segment, 274 since the beginning of this year. So either we're going to deal with the thing that causes the mass shooting, which is high capacity magazines, AR-15s and assault rifles, or we're going to continue to have a but circular Richard, conversation. Can I, can I ask you this, though? I mean, let's get real about this. There are, mass, there are mass shootings happening every weekend in, um, in our inner cities. I yeah. mean, we, we see multiple shootings every night daily in cities like Chicago. And Peter Ducey actually brought this up in a daily briefing um, just this week about this. What about the illegal guns? Let's watch so, this really quickly, and I'll have you respond on the other side. 47 people shot there over the Memorial Day weekend, nine of them died. So which law would have prevented any of that? All right, well. Do, do we think that all these people in Chicago who are shooting each other are legally buying their guns? So here's, here, here's a couple of examples for you. I was just talking about the red flags law. Um, there are some examples here of how they've prevented tragedies. So, so Richard, go ahead. I mean, what about the, the guns that are, that are acquired illegally? Listen, I think this is absolutely a great conversation we have to have, right? I live, I live in the nation's capital where we've seen an increase in gun violence because of the proliferation of illegal guns. And oftentimes on the right and on the left, for that matter, I think we live in this world in which we think that we live in a country that to go from Virginia to Maryland or to go from Virginia to D.C., there's a border control or there's a board like we're going to a new country, but we're not. And so we have a nation that has 50 different states with 50 different set of gun laws. So if you can buy a gun in Virginia and make a straw purchase in Washington, D.C., therein lies the problem. Problem. This is why the federal government has to step in and says, look, we believe in the Second Amendment. We believe in the right to bear arms. But that right comes with limits. And those limits end when people, innocent people, lose their lives. When, whether they're at a school, whether they're at a community block party in Chicago, whether they're at a, a grocery store in Buffalo. We have to have an all-above approach where I agree with Mark. So part of it is stopping the proliferation of AR-15s. The other part is, is having police getting the funding they need to stop the proliferation of illegal guns, but stopping the proliferation of illegal guns means forcing some states to harden their laws so people can't make straw purchases for guns from, from you know, private party guns from one to another. Mark, please, if you can respond to Richard. Well, and I think what we have to recognize, though, is that all of these gun laws, and by the way, most of these cities have some of the toughest gun laws. It's not the law that matters. It's but going to be the law point. enforcement, there, but guns, also the, getting the guns to, the root, to the root cause. If we can let, just, just, and, and let, so, just let Mark wrap it up really quickly. We're, we're what, almost what, out of what time. We have to do, what, yeah, what we have to understand is that there is not a single answer to this, as I, as I said earlier. And, and it doesn't matter if you raise the age of when someone can buy a gun. You know, these people who are buying them in back alleys out of, out of trunks aren't getting background check, and no one's giving them an ID to see if they, if they are old enough to have that weapon. They're, they're going to use that weapon. What we need to do is strengthen law enforcement, support our police, and then also make sure that we're taking the steps necessary to secure those areas, like a lot of these lawmakers. They live behind very tight security and gun bans, and that's what keeps those buildings safe. Yeah, I know the ATF in New York, we just interviewed somebody from that organization, just said they would love more people um, to work with them. Thank you to you both. We appreciate it. I know it's a very hotly debated topic, so we appreciate your time.